Hi all, welcome to Learn IT. In the last video, we had learned about Amazon Transcribe service, which is a speech to text service. We had developed a serverless application, and using that application, we were able to generate transcripts out of our audio and video files by placing files into the S3. So we had developed a event based application using Amazon S3, Amazon Lambda function, Amazon Transcribe service. But we did not have any failure handling mechanism at our Lambda function. So if any of the events processing is failed in our Lambda function, we were not able to identify which event is failed or we were not able to retry for the same event. So in this video, we are going to learn how to retry for the failed event and also how to send email notification for the failed event. So we want to retry other than the Lambda's default retry and also we want to send no email notifications for failed events. And to achieve that, we are going to use Amazon SNS service, which is a simple notification service. Amazon SNS provides us two types of functionalities. One is A to A pub sub functionalities and other is A to P functionality. With pub sub functionality, we can publish error messages from one system and subscribe those error messages to other systems like Amazon SQS, Amazon Lambda functions, HTTPS endpoints. We can listen them on all of these subscriber systems. And with A2P functionality, we can send SMS, mobile push notifications and email notifications. So guys, this is the updated target flow that we want to achieve for our serverless application. And in this flow, we are going to update our Lambda with dead letter queue configuration. With DLQ, our Lambda will be publishing all the failed S3 events to SNS topic. And from SNS topic, we will be subscribing this SNS topic to email as well as another lambda function to reprocess the same event and with a custom retry logic for a specified number of retries if we are still getting the event failure then we will be moving those files from actual s3 bucket to errored file s3 bucket so this is the updated flow that we want to achieve now let's go to visual studio code and understand the changes required for this flow so guys this is our serverless yaml file and the first change i have done is for our s3 handler lambda function so earlier we have a normal s3 handler lambda function which was listening to s3 bucket and processing the files from s3 bucket and now i have added own error property and under own error i have mentioned the reference of dlq topic so it is an sns topic and this means Whenever any error is happening of, on our Lambda function, it will be publishing those events to uh, DLQ topic that is our SNS topic. So uh, we will be creating this DLQ topic within the same serverless YAML. Along with that, I have added one more Lambda function that is our retry Lambda. And from this Lambda function, we, we have a custom logic to retry the failure events. If you look at the trigger point, we have registered SNS DLQ topic because we want to subscribe this topic for this lambda function and we will be listening the messages on this lambda function from sns dlq topic now coming to resources i have added one more s3 bucket for errored files because if any of the file processing failed we will be moving those files to error s3 bucket and the next resource we have here is for dlq topic that is sns topic and we have provided the topic name as learn it dlq demo topic and for subscriptions of this topic i have added two subscriptions one is as email notification so we have registered our email to receive email notification in case of any failure event and other is retry lambda subscription because we want to listen all the error messages on our lambda function to to reprocess the same events from our custom retry lambda other than these changes, I have added one more IAM execution role for our new retry lambda function. And for retry lambda, I have added policies for AWS CloudWatch and both of our S3 buckets. Because from lambda function, from retry lambda function, we will be accessing both of these S3 buckets to move files from one S3 bucket to another S3 bucket for failure events after completing all retries. Also, I have added one SNS publish permission to our existing IAM execution role for our existing S3 Lambda function because from S3 handler we will be publishing error messages to our DLQ topic so we will be needing SNS publish permission in our actual Lambda function. Now let's go through the retry handler Lambda function. 
In retry handler lambda function, we are listening to SNS event and from SNS event, we are getting S3 event notification record. This is the record for which our actual lambda was failed. Now once we get this record, out of this record, we are getting a source bucket name also source key that is the object key. Once we get those details, we can get our S3 object. After getting the S3 object, I am extracting out the object metadata from this S3 object and I am checking whether there is any retry count available in the metadata. If the retry count exists in the object's user metadata, we can check whether it is beyond our retry limit or not. So currently I have hard coded this as a 5. So it will reprocess this file maximum 5 number of times. If it is less than 5, then I am increasing the retry count in the object's metadata and again I am putting the same object in the same bucket. Else, I will be saying that custom retry limit is exhausted because it is more than our threshold limit of retry. So we will be moving this file to error files S3 bucket and also we will delete it from the actual location. If we don't have retry count in our object's metadata, we can initialize it initially with one count. So when there is no retry count in the metadata, I am putting it as a one and I am putting the same file in the same location so that it can be reprocessed. So this is the simple logic that I have added to retry the failed events from our actual S3 handler lambda function. So if we look at the S3 handler lambda function, we have a transcribe job call that we have seen earlier in our previous video. So guys, let's build package and deploy this application and validate that our flow is working fine or not. So I am first building this application, say, mvn clean install this is a maven project for our lambda function so this will be building our jar with our lambda functions code uh, let's wait it's building building okay some more time okay so we are done building our lambda functions Java archive. Now let's package our application using serverless package command. So I'm saying sls package. It will take some time to package it. Okay, so we are done packaging our application. Let's use sls deploy command to deploy this. Okay, so now it will be running our CloudFormation stack, which is generated out of the serverless YAML. We can see our CloudFormation stack here. So it will be creating resources using this CloudFormation stack, which is generated out of our serverless YAML file. We can see here everything, our dead letter config, our DLQ topic, lambda functions everything let's wait for some time to create this cloud formation stack and deploy our resources so guys it is done with serverless deploy it has created all the resources now let's go to aws console and check whether it has created our resources as expected or not so let's first go to cloud formation and check whether this stack is available then uh, let's go to simple notification service sns to verify the sns topic as well as subscriptions and then we can see our s3 packets and lambda functions so if we look at the cloud formation stack it has created learn it transcribe demo dev and it was completed if you look at the simple notification service we have one sns topic which is learn it dlq demo topic that is the name which we have provided if you go to this topic and see the subscriptions we have we should be having two subscriptions one is for email and another is for our retry lambda function so we have both the subscriptions available here if you see here for email notifications it is saying the pending confirmation because we need to confirm this from our email inbox now let's go to email inbox and we should be having one notification for confirmation so let's go to this notification this email and let's confirm the subscription 
once we confirm the subscription we should be able to see the confirmation in our simple notification service subscriptions so let's reload this you can see here it is confirmed now so our subscriptions are okay and also our sns topic is okay if we look at the functions now let's go to retry lambda as well as our s3 handler lambda function if we look at the retry lambda function it has trigger point as sns because it will be listening to sns events and if we look at the s3 handler lambda function it will be having s3 as a trigger point because it will be listening to files placing in the s3 bucket if you look at the s3s we should be having two buckets one is learn it transcribe sns demo bucket and one is learn it transcribe error file bucket so these are our two buckets for this application now let's upload a new file in our actual s3 bucket to process for amazon transcription so i am uploading script 1 mp3 file now in our s3 bucket and once we upload this file our first lambda function that is s3 handler it will be hit it will be triggered from this s3 bucket so let's go to our actual lambda function that is s3 handler lambda function if you look at the mon cloudwatch logs from monitor tab you can go to cloudwatch logs we should be able to see the cloudwatch logs for the event which is triggered from our s3 bucket on uploading a new file so guys it has created one log stream and if we see here it has processed this files multiple time because it was failing so if we look at the error it was saying the job name already exists because i had already processed this script one file in the last video so it was failing for the job name and because of this failure it was going through sns topic and again and again it has triggered so if we look at the counts of start request id it should be total 5 now if we go to our retry lambda function sns retry lambda function and monitor the logs of our retry lambda function so we should be able to see the corresponding logs for retry logic that we have added so you can see one log stream is there and in this log stream we can see the first time it has come to this retry lambda function it has initialized it with count 1 then again it came with retry count 2 retry count 3 retry count 4 it was failing all the time once it reached to our threshold limit that is 5 at that time it said custom retry limit is exhausted so we are moving file to our error bucket so if we now go to our s3 buckets if we look at the uh, transcribe sns demo bucket if we reload it so there is just a temp file which was because of transcript uh, transcribe service and if we go to our actual bucket uh, sorry error bucket then if we reload it our file should be moved here because this was failed now one more thing to verify is email notification now let's go to email box and see whether we have got any notifications or not so you can see here this file was failed for total 6 times and we have got 6 events from sns topic to our mailbox six times because one was the initial and five more retries so if we reload it then we should be able to see total six events see we have total six counts so guys this was on uh, aws lambda with dlq dead letter queue configuration amazon sns sns topics and sns subscriptions as email and lambda hope you like the video thank you for watching this video please join me in the next videos